Now the red-eyed crocodile skin care is not going to be like your average reptile care. These guys are going to be a little bit more difficult to care for and their care is just a little bit more advanced than the average reptile goes. Find that with the fact that there's not a plethora of information about the care of the red-eyed crocodile stink, you get um well, quite a few mistakes when the new keepers come in trying to care for these guys. Those mistakes are exactly what we are going to be talking about today. The top five care mistakes that you make with your red-eyed crocodile skinks. So with all that being said, I guess time to sit back, relax, dive into the red-eyed crocodile skink and roll the intro. Kicking off this list, we're going to be starting with number five, not providing a large enough water area. Now, red-eyed crocodile skinks are a humidity-loving species, which means really what it says. They absolutely adore humidity, and it is a must in the process of caring for them. Now, in the wild, you're actually going to find these guys much like salamanders. They're going to be underneath moist rocks, uh, next to creek beds, really anything where there's just damp, decaying wood, things like that. That is a crocodile skink's uh, pr primary... Uh, Preferred housing. A great way to get the humidity up to that optimal range is going to be a large water area. This isn't going to be something where you're going to get one of those dinky little bowls that the animal can't even get into, just enough for it to drink out of. Uh, that's not going to be good enough for the crocodile sink. You're going to want a large water basin that's going to have enough for the animal to actually get into. It can soak in, it can hide. I usually, for my crocodile sink, I have this nice big bowl that's filled, and then I put a cork flat right about halfway in it. So, of course, these being a shy species, which we'll get into a little bit later, he's able to hide while still being in the water ball which they absolutely adore enjoy however when it comes to the water basin there is such a thing as too big being too big for the animal and that is going to bring us to number four which is too big of a water basin. Of course, you don't want that small, dinky water bowl that's not gonna take the cake. You want a properly sized water bowl. Uh, probably the ones that I find the best are either gonna be shoebox bins, which of course something to go in it so the animal can climb in and out of properly. Uh, another good thing is the little Exoterra water bins. I'm not sure they're like the $25 ones. I personally have one laying around. Uh, honestly, I think the shoebox work a little bit better. There's a little bit more water that's able to go in there. However, the Exoterra does look a little nicer, so really aesthetic or functionality. You Take your pick. <laughs> but with all that being said, you can go too overwhelmed with the water area. Contrary to popular belief, which the actual name, you know, crocodile skink, uh, it says actually aren't the best swimmers. I, I know it doesn't make any sense, but they don't swim that well. So if you're providing too large of a water basin, or if you're doing something like a completely aquatic, like you're trying to do a paludarium, however, it's just like all water, there's actually no substrate. Uh, your crocodile sink does have risk of drowning. It's not going to enjoy it that much because it's just constantly in water, which is going to stress him out completely. Which, by the way, a high stress species, not a good idea. But, um, yeah, unless you're like putting uh, honestly, no, the, the complete water basin idea just isn't a go to when it comes to the red eyed crocodile skink. Another big factor is, of course, going to be bacterial infections and scale rot. If the crocodile skink is left wet for too long, it does not have a place to get completely dried out. Uh, that's going to cause some skin infections, you know, mold, fungus, bacterial, however you want to put it, that's going to happen to your crocodile sink if you do keep it too wet. You're going to want an area with a large water basin and completely wet down area and then a dry area, maybe something like the coconut hide or even when you're missing that area and that substrate within that coconut hide does not get saturated with that humidity and wetness. That's something that I use with myself, but we use plenty of hides and we also have dry hides, wet hides, and then of course the hide that's actually inside the water bowl itself. And that's gonna kind of bring us into a subtopic within this, which is going to be keeping the enclosure actually just too wet. Uh, remember, wet does not equal humidity. If you guys wanna know some ways of keeping proper humidity, I did make a video, I'll post it right here. Uh, however, just because you're keeping uh, the substrate and the enclosure itself just oversaturated with water to the point where it's just clogged and it looks like a swampy, muddy mess, that doesn't mean it's getting humidity. There are a couple of factors that go into humidity. Uh, again, that video right there. Uh, however, you know, if you have just an absolutely drenched tank and yet your still humidity is around 40%, that's a ventilation issue. Uh, you're probably using something like an aquarium, in which case I recommend sealing part of that screen to make sure that humidity retains within that enclosure. And then making sure you absolutely dry that enclosure out or swap the substrate out. Because again, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, if you're putting too much of a wet substrate and that crocodile scene is constantly constantly exposed to that, that's going to cause some issues down the road, which is it's not fun. Vet care and crocodile skinks don't mix very well, of course, them being very high stress, applying topical medicine, things like that, it usually is a recipe for disaster. Prevention or preventative care is really the best thing to do for your crocodile skink. 
And before we get into the next care mistake, if you guys can do me a huge favor, if you are enjoying the video and you find that you're finding good, good information, everything is coolness in this awesome channel, if you can do me a huge favor, go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, back to the video. But moving on, we did brush up on a topic I wanna to go into a little bit more, and that is going to be number three, not providing enough hides for your crocodile skink. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've said this in Crocodile Sting videos, but we are going to say it one more time. Uh, crocodile Stings are the epitome of shy, reclusive, and stressed, easy, sensitive animals. They really, all in all, are just not great pets. However, you already got your Crocodile Stings, so let's talk about how to actually care for them. You are going to want as many hides as you can physically put inside that enclosure. Personally, for me, I'm using six different hides inside my 15-gallon Viv. We got a couple of coconut hides, we got some cork flats, cork tubes spanning in different parts of the substrate so you can actually burrow in and get into the substrate. A little bit more of a humidity retreat or a humid hide. Of course we got that hide on the water area so wherever he wants to go where that humidity range is we're providing multiple multi or micro climates in order for him to get as comfortable as he possibly wants. In my personal opinion I do believe you should have at least five hides for your crocodile sink spanning in those different micro climates that we talked about a little bit earlier or I guess five seconds ago. Um, not providing hides is going to just stress the animal. I know everyone wants to see the really cool baby dragon, the pet dragon you just got. However, the reality of the situation is you're really going to rarely ever see the crocodile skink. I always get a picture when mine pops up because it's like a mm -hmm. historical moment in my reptile keeping. It's like, oh my god, I see the crocodile skink for once this month. And that's kind of just how it is. That's the animal. That's the pet you signed up for. Uh, restricting that hide just because you just selfishly want to see that animal is not only detrimental to the animal's uh, psychological Logically, you know, physiology. Fizolis, not only is it not going to like it, it's going to be detrimental to the health. It's going to stress the animal out. Of course, a stressed animal means a weaker immune system. That is a recipe for disaster and debilitating for the animal. Give it some hides, man. Give it as many hides as you can possibly fit inside that enclosure. Alrighty, folks, we just got a couple more care mistakes to go over, and that is going to bring us to number two, not going bioactive for your crocodile skink. Much like the poison dart frogs, I do believe bioactive is pretty much the only way to go with crocodile sinks. If you're not doing bioactive for your guy, it's really going to be an uphill battle on obtaining all those care elements. Uh, pretty much going with a bioactive plaintive vivarium for a crocodile sink, it's going to streamline everything. It's going to make everything just a little bit easier. It's going to make the animal just a little bit more comfortable, and it's going to make your life just a little bit less stressful when owning the crocodile skink. Now let's really break that down of why bioactive is so good for crocodile sinks. Number one, planted real plant inside of your vivarium. That is going to do two things for the crocodile sink that is beneficial. Number one, live plants, of course, are going to be better humidity retainers than your average just fake silky plants. They're not going to have really much humidity whatsoever. So that is going to be able to retain humidity a lot better. Personally, I love pothos. It's a weed. It grows like a weed and it is just incredible. You got these nice big leafy things providing which one number two would be is providing a proper shelter. Not only do you have to put all these weird brown hides make the enclosure look kind of lame, but no, you get these nice green plants that's going to stretch out and vine out, creating these little micro hides that he can kind of scurry into, scurry around in. Uh, it's good mental intervention for the animal. It retains that humidity. You're not going to have such a saturated soil, or you're going to have to be changing the soil so much after it becomes too saturated because the plants and the roots are going to absorb the hydration within that soil, making a nice little life cycle. Pretty much really what bioactive is. Uh, that means less time stressing out the animal by going in, removing the animal, switching subs right out. No now you have an animal where it has base hides that's always growing by the way which is great for him and also you have a little cycle going where you don't have to really worry about changing that soil because it does the job for you. Moving on to the bioactive bonus parts for mental enrichment it's going to be the idea of forging. Of course with uh, bioactive enclosures you're going to want a cleanup crew, a cuck as they say, uh, that's C-U-C -C, not um, the other one. Yeah, you're gonna have different uh, microfauna in there. That is gonna be uh, beneficial bacteria, springtails, isopods, assorted things like that. And isopods, crocodile things actually enjoy them. So I wouldn't put the fancy isopods in there if you're, uh, you know, not worried about it. The wild isopods do just fine, the little base wild type morph. I, I don't know what you call the different colorations of isopods, but they're in there. Not only are they gonna help break down the waste that the crocodile skinks produces, it also creates a nice little fun hunting thing for their skink. He's gonna be able to dig around the substrate, find these little isopods, eat them, have a great time. He's gonna have a ball in there. It's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a lot better than just having him on just some base cocoa fiber and calling it a day. I mean, you know, this enclosure or that enclosure. 
You tell me which one looks better and which one's better for the animal. Alrighty folks, getting down to the last topic at hand, it's gonna be the most important one, the biggest mistake I find a lot of new keepers making with their crocodile stink, and that is going to be number one, handling. <sighs> handling your croc skink. Again, I cannot stress this enough. This is a look and don't touch animal. Well, I guess when you can look, this is a leave it alone and it's not even a look don't touch because you rarely ever get to see it. Uh, crocodile stings do not do well with handling. It's not good for the animal. Now I know the base thing is when people grab the crocodile stink, they don't move so they think, oh, it's a tame animal because in most realities when it comes to reptiles, uh, physiology, when they are stressed out, uh, things like that, you're gonna have an animal that is going to be scurrying away, trying to run away. And when their crocodile stink doesn't do that, they just assume, oh, this animal enjoys handling it's not stressed out because it's not running away. It must actually like me. Stop animal. Stop animal morph. Anim stop anamorphizing. Is that the right? Stop putting human characteristics on animals. <laughs> no, that is not the case. Nine times out of ten, crocodile scenes are actually going to play dead. That is their defense mechanism. That is what they do when they're stressed. They're going to lay as still as possible in hopes that you leave it alone. Leave the crocodile skink. Alone. They don't want to. They want to be. They don't want to be held. They don't want to be messed with. They want to be left alone. And that's what you have to do as a proper keeper in caring for your animal. Now, again, in most cases or in severe cases, when that defense mechanism doesn't work, you're gonna actually hear the animal vocalize as a high-pitched squeak. I know, adorable. The crocodile skink is very cute. Yes, yes. It is actually, or is also very bad for the animal. That means that animal is in that that red light. It is all the way up here in that stress meter, and that is its last mechanism in trying to get away away from you. Don't do that to your animal, man. Don't stress it out beyond belief just because you want to hear a cute little squeaking noise. Just look a YouTube video about some other not good person that did it anyway. I don't know, man. Just don't leave the animal alone. That is the basis. It is not a handleable animal. Do not handle your animal. If you want to socialize and interact with it, tongue feeding is a thing that can be done over time with taming the animal. Uh, I find some are a little bit more adept in doing it than others, but that is something you can do. However, can't stress this enough. I see it all the time. Do not pick up your crocodile sink and let it and just hang out with it on the couch. That is debilitating the animal. It's detrimental. Don't do it. There you have it, folks. Five of the biggest care mistakes I see people doing with their red-eyed crocodile skink. But now it's your turn. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Have you made any of these care mistakes? Or did I miss a care mistake that you see very often that you want to be told that is a misconception and, well, don't want people to do it? If you guys haven't had enough of these crocodile sting videos, I got an awesome playlist right here. We got a couple more videos right there. Right down here is where you hit the subscribe button, which I'd really, really appreciate so much. And other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, goodbye.